The mural was created as a neighborhood uh, project that involved a lot of neighborhood people providing input to the content, especially kids. It was worked on between 1980 and 82, so it was actually a two year long process. The front left panel, which is the most prominent and most important, features Victor Hara, the famous Chilean singer-songwriter, who was arrested in 1973 when the Pinochet dictatorship took over in Chile. In the stadium where he and thousands of others had been thrown as arrestees, they broke his hands and they killed him. The stadium is now named after Victor Hara. And he's singing a song with his name on the library. The back wall features the neighborhood history, starting with Native Americans, and goes forward to the then present. On the side is a panel that honors working women. It also has hands, different races, clasping in friendship, and honors Arturo Duran, a kid who was killed in what was at the time considered to be Latino and Filipino tension. It lasted a good long time, 30 years, with what looks like essentially no maintenance. And the renovation, which opened in 2009, unfortunately also painted out certain portions. They spent $5.7 million on a renovation and an earthquake strengthening, but did not spend any money on the exterior of the building. So the Library Commission decided that all the entire mural, all three sides, should be completely painted out and replaced on two sides, so brand new murals are intended to go up. And they did not discuss the cost, but research showed that the cost was to be more than 10 times the refreshment cost. There was a so-called community process, which is frequently cited as the reason why, even if we don't agree with the decision, we should go along with it. And in fact, the community process was a very closed process and a very anti-democratic process. They met with no publicly announced meeting dates and times so that nobody was able to observe or certainly comment on anything that they were doing. The library had planned to put up scaffolding on June the 8th, a Friday, and to begin paint out on the following Monday, June 11th. Unfortunately for the library, they didn't pay attention to the California Art Preservation Act. The city has to provide 90 days notice to an artist whose work they want to destroy, or if the artist has died, the heirs. And the library had simply not notified the artist died in 1996, but has a sister living in another state. So the sister asserted her rights under the act on June the 8th, and so the library had to immediately stop any planned paint out. The library intends to go ahead with the paint out on October the 1st. The neighborhood has greatly gentrified since the time when it was largely Latino, and some people have said, its gentrification, as well as an opportunity for some of the folks in the neighborhood to have their way about a mural that they don't like. And the question, why should this mural be preserved, as opposed to replacing it now that it has become so deteriorated, the refreshment clearly would be a lot less expensive than doing a replacement. But the real reason is that, number one, it's a valuable mural with tremendous charm, beauty, and content and it has a history in the neighborhood. Uh, it's like saying, why not get rid of a wonderful landmark building and put up a good new building? It's not necessarily that the new building would be bad, but if you have a worthy artwork, uh, why not preserve it? Library Users Association would be very happy to hear from anybody. We're certainly working hard to retain the mural, but it's very important for folks to spread the word and to let the mayor and the supervisors know that this is something that is really worth saving and should not be destroyed.